How's it going, man? Thanks for the time. We appreciate uh, you coming to chat to us ahead of South Africa. Are you excited to be coming back? I am indeed. Yeah, it's it's it snuck up on me a little bit. I I, uh, I I looked at my calendar and I'm there in a couple of weeks. So I'm ready. I'm ready to go. What did you enjoy most about the previous time that you were here? Uh, one time I went to what is it? Something Albert. Something I went on safari in this place called Port Albert or something. Prince yeah. Albert. And they, they put, yeah, and they put me they put me in a hotel room and a and a, and a giraffe came and tapped his head on the window while I was showering. So that was that was something I've never experienced anywhere else. But the crowds are always great, and you know this will be my, I believe, fourth time mm-hmm. coming to South Africa. Third time is it? Third time by myself. But I came many years ago to perform at the casinos with a whole lot of other comedians. But so I, I, I've been coming to South Africa to do gigs now for. Uh, I would say 18 years. Yeah. Long time. Yeah, it has been a long time. It's going to be nice to have you back and on the back of the, the new specials and things, um, which congratulations as well. I wanted to know, like, um, do, do you do you have a part of, like, is Los Angeles home home for you? Do you still feel like Australia's home? I know, like, you left there, university, you ended up in the UK. Like, you're like a man of everywhere, man. Uh, ho- home's Los Angeles because that's where... My kids are, man. Mm-hmm. My kids are American, so that's my home. But, you know, I still call Australia home. Like, Australia's where I'm from. And, and uh, you know, I, I've been living in America now for 16 years, mm-hmm. and I, I'm, I'm, I still don't quite understand them completely. There's still things that I don't get about Americans. So, so I don't think I've fully assimilated over 16 years. But I... I Look, like, this is home. I, I go to basketball games. I'm a baseball fan. My my sons have American accents, so so this is home. Fully assimilated. I love that, you, that you, we've spoken about your kids, and I have two kids as well, and I find them mm-hmm. hilarious. Are your kids funnier than you? My well, the two year old only says about. 30 words so you'd have to construct a pretty good joke out of those words to be funnier than me but you know he farts on cue so that's got to that's got to show some level of comedy coming Mm. out of him my my 11 year old who's downstairs is hilarious yeah he's very he's he's very funny he he comes out with funny things all the time he he's got the gene you know it's funny because i have a funny i have one brother who's funny and i have another brother who's not funny and i I, I remember looking at my nephews and nieces and seeing which ones had the funny gene, and and uh, I've got I've got five of them, and and two of them have the funny gene, but I won't say who's who because you know they might find out I which one just, I don't think is very funny. I was just going to ask you, <laughs> who's the funny brother, the military guy or the investment banker? The investment banker is oh. the funny one. Yeah. <laughs> the cop's not funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, do, does does your eleven year old know you're famous? Well, look, my eleven-year-old goes to school with, and, and every 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 dad or mum is famous at the school. So, Got you. you know, it's a it's a it, he goes to a school in Hollywood where he 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 meets famous people all the time. You know, my my my, my son, you know, Michael Jackson's kids went to my son's school. Mm. So he he's the, no one's. He he knows I'm famous, but he knows that I'm the least famous dad in the whole class. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's all relative, you know. But he's been coming to see me do shows since he was born, you know. So he he stood in the wings. But I let him watch my comedy until he was about four, and and he could comprehend more what I was saying. And now he can't. He he has to sit in the dressing room, but he he, he comes and enjoys the atmosphere, and he hangs out with other comedians and that type of stuff. So. He, he he knows what's going on. We're doing a tour of Australia over my summer and your winter, and um, he's going to come on the road with me the whole time. So for his summer break, so so you know, I'll try to get him some uh, backstage work so he can earn a few bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Are you totally Hollywood, or do you still do kind of normal dad stuff? Are you mowing the lawn? Are you emptying, oh, and I, filling I, the dishwasher? I could- I could lie. I could lie to you right now and say that I mowed the lawn. But I think my gardener's in the backyard and my cleaner's <laughs> just in the laundry right now. Um, but no, I, I I do all the school run and I I um, you know I do all the all the dad duties. I, t- today I've got you know my son's got a little league baseball game and I'll be I'll be right there cheering him on. You know, He's, yeah, I, I I try to be as much a dad as possible. When um, my eldest boy's at home, I don't work. 
I uh, I only work every second week, so that I, I so I think that he thinks that I do nothing. <laughs> I think he thinks that I hardly work at all. I do like one tour in in the summer, and that's it. But uh, when he's with his mum, I go on the road. Uh, it must be nice being able to take him on tour, as you said, to Australia with you now and show him around a bit and a little bit of what Dad does. Being a young comic in your twenties, traveling the world is probably very rock and roll. But like Dad, comic traveling, are you are you getting to the point where you're like, oh man, another plane? No, nah, well, it, it, look. Look, as, as 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 the body has gotten weaker, the plane seats have gotten larger. <laughs> so it's all right, you know what I mean? Like in my twenties, it, it was just as stressful because I was sitting in economy, and now it's like, I, like you know, look, I have a two-year-old; he's not a baby anymore. But mm. I'm looking forward to the twenty-four-hour flight to South Africa and just sitting back and popping a couple of Xanaxes and going to sleep. I think it's going to be wonderful. I get it. I totally get it. <laughs> you are so famous now and your comedy it lives on social media on your specials all of that so your fans have access to you even when they don't see a live show so what is the thing yeah. that or the story or the joke that people quote back to you the most uh the, the gun control routine is is the uh is the bit that probably gets quoted back uh the most to me and um, the one that I get probably sent to me the most is is my Oscar Pistorius routine, <laughs> which which I always thought because I did the South African accent in it that you guys would never welcome me back into the country, but you all seem to enjoy it, so I'll keep doing it, you know. <laughs> Listen, yeah, that's a whole, that's a whole thing. Um, I wanted to ask, like, <laughs> yeah. that's that's such a great radio response. It's a, yeah, that's man, a whole thing. It's a whole that's thing. It. Yeah, it really is. Um, you've over the years now, you've done like all of the Netflix specials and your own shows, and you've been sort of the interviewer as much as you've been interviewed now. They're the famous ones, you know, you fighting with Jordan Peterson and talking to so-and-so and and differing about stuff. I didn't fight with Jordan Peterson. (laughs) I got no problem with Jordan Peterson. I got along well with Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson, I will say, um, I'll give him this. He, he, uh, I I, I debated something about the the gay wedding cakes and that type of stuff, and he actually changed his mind. I think that's a great conversation where someone can actually see someone's point of view. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's, but, um, yeah, no, I've, I've talked to a lot of people. Um, it's, it's, it's easier being interviewed. I, oh, actually I'll say it's, yeah, it's easier being interviewed than interviewing people. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I, I do tend can, to agree. You, you can get in trouble in both directions <laughs> as you would know, right? What, what you I, can, you can ask the wrong question and get yeah. in trouble or you can answer the question wrongly and get in trouble. It's a double-edged sword, this. Do you feel that conversation and even interviews, like it's sort of becoming more combative. People want more sound bites out of it. People want to know who won a conversation. It just, it feels mad at the moment on social media. Well, the problem with every everything with social media and with the TikTok generation is that every everything's, um, not being listened to fully, you know. Mm. If, if if you hear someone answer a question and then you you know you don't like their answer, maybe if you listen to the whole interview, you would understand where that person's coming from. Um, same with stand up comedy. Stand up comedy used to be watched as an hour long special, and you could see everything in context and see where the comedian was going. But now you're just getting one joke, and you might that co- comedian might seem too offensive, or it might not he. he or maybe they're not making the point they want to make mm. because you haven't heard the earlier routine. So it's a classic example of that. If you watch my Oscar Pistorius routine, it's very offensive unless you've watched the gun control routine that happened five minutes earlier that I'm referencing all the time. In the same way that, you know, I, I must be an old man now because I still like albums, you know, because albums, bands used to bring out albums and they had a flow to them. They had a song that led into this song and then a heavier song and then a ballad and then it ended up with some epic sort of theme at the end. And you could listen to, you know, like classic examples, something like Sgt. Peppers or something, and it had a flow and a movement and, and it was a piece of art. Now it's just people select the one song they want and that's the one they listen to. You know, by having so much selection in the world, we're only listening and watching the things that we particularly want to watch. And I believe we're watching a narrow view of the world. But that's got to be pretty cool for you 
as a comedian that people are coming to a show when there is so <laughs> hello <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> we just met Jim's cat. cat. Can what? we meet the cat? What's the yeah, cat's yeah. name? Uh, this one's Elvis. This one. But, hey Elvis. Uh, there's, an, there's, there's another one going around. Yeah, he's he's all right. This one. This one's a friendly one. He has a sister who looks the same. Who isn't friendly at all? She's around <laughs> somewhere talking. What's her name? Uh, her name's Freddie. <laughs> no wonder she's story. grumpy. No wonder she's grumpy. <laughs> but uh, for someone to actually choose to come to a theatre, leave their house, come and see you, make them laugh—that's got to be kind of like a feather in your cap as a comedian. Well, it, it, when I was younger, I don't think I appreciated it as much as I do now. You know, when I was younger. I, I, the crowds were showing up and I thought that I had a, you know, a limited shelf life, but, um, I, I was not amazed by how many people showed up because I went out all the time. I was always out. I was out on a Monday at a pub quiz and Tuesday at this and Wednesday at the movies. I was probably doing drugs on a Thursday, drinking on a Friday. And you know what I mean? Like I was out all the time, but now that I'm in my forties, it's, it's really hard to leave the house. You know what I mean? And and if you're like me and you've got young kids, you get with the wife, I get maybe 12 date nights a year. And for people to actually spend their date night, get a babysitter. Let's plan the time out. Go out for a minute. It's a big deal for people to leave the house. So so I, I take that very personally. Like, I, I really do try to put on the best show I can. I want you to leave the show thinking that was worth it. Because so many times you leave the house and you go, that wasn't worth it. I could have stayed home and watched The Bachelor. <laughs> so on one of these 12 days, these special moments, yeah. the babysitter is booked. You, you and I, you're taking me out for date night. What are we doing, Jim? What is it, oh, Jim Jeffrey's date night special? Yeah. Okay, okay. Me, well, me and the wife, because we, we don't get much. Like, I don't know if you're going to like this answer, but, you know, I come from California where weed is completely legal. What I do is I, I take a whole lot of edibles and I go out to a restaurant and I eat as much as I can. <laughs> I, I've given up drinking. I've given up drugs. I don't smoke cigarettes anymore. That's my vice is getting high and eating a lot of food. So that's how me and the wife go. Magic. Maybe a movie. <laughs> you studied musical theatre, so I want to know, what Correct. is your favourite musical? West Side Story. That's oh! the best musical ever written. That's Brilliant. the best musical ever written. She's also a musical theatre kid, so... Brilliant answer. Yeah, there's no, there's no argument. There's many great musicals, but that's the best musical ever written. I didn't really like the last version of it because I, I, I really enjoyed the original yeah. movie. Um, but I've seen many stage productions of it. And, you know, he, it, like Tony in the new movie didn't hit the high C when he was Maria, no. Maria, Maria, that one. He didn't do that bit. I was very disappointed. <laughs> I like you. Even more now. That was the correct answer. Thank you so much, Jim. <laughs> no really worries. appreciate your you time, You guys going to come to the show? Absolutely. We will see you there 100%. Right, we'll, we'll make sure you come backstage and say hello. Make sure they sort you out with passes to come back. Thank you, mate. We'd appreciate that. And we look forward to seeing you in just a couple of weeks. No worries. See you soon. Thank Magic. You. Thanks, mate.